Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and in today's little dev update we are going to take a first look at the new implementations for the Light Campaign V3. And before we take a look into this uh, very rough state of um, not, not even the Light Campaign but engineering and the world map has been implemented um, in a first draft state. And before that, I need to talk about uh, coming updates. And coming updates uh, is a little weird this time around because we kind of did a little boo-boo. We did a little boo-boo and we didn't properly branch uh, because, oh, we thought, like, oh, yeah, this is just a little thing to do. And then we continued and then it was more. And now it's the start of the light campaign. And... Um, we haven't branched off, so we are not going to have this entirely on closed beta. So we would like to give you some uh, a patch, basically. A patch that fixes most likely most of the crash bugs you have when exiting the designers. And when switching from a photo scene back into the designer. Uh, that is something that many people had and I think we have a fix for that and that is definitely something we would like to give to you to the open branch to the no, not in the open branch but the, to the default branch even problem with that is we didn't branch so all the new stuff will be in that too and okay with that being said that means we need to polish it up a little bit more before you actually get it to that version but you will receive it in an update pretty soon already so okay that means also that the bug fix itself took a little longer because we first have to polish this one up so sorry about that that was a mistake uh, overall i would say and um well, at least you get to see some new stuff already so let's take a look light campaign um so what is this well uh, we do have uh, the project view, just as normal. Let's uh, just enter this one. And you see something weird in the background here. Yeah, that, that is that is very weird. And you see a kind of timeline. This is the screen you already know from the uh, previous update. The, the, this still works and is all functional. So you can create a model and various facelifts with many trims and so on. I've, sh I've shown you how that all works. But this is only one step along the timeline for managing your model. And no, this has nothing to do with cardinal locking of fixtures. This is just a placeholder uh, for the distribution. And uh, what is this down here? It's a separate timeline with only major steps in it. No minor steps in it. And first off, ta-da! The world map. And... You spot something straight away. Two new regions. Yay. Daluha. Oh, yeah, yeah. And highlighting is working. So you can select which regions you would like to um, to sell your cars in. Because that is something you can decide. Not to whom you sell. Not which demographic to sell to, obviously. You don't read people's minds. But you can decide where in which countries you would like to sell your cars. As long as they are unlocked. And disregard all the stuff you see here test test and uh, some stuff being selected and not selected that is obviously not working also these regions would probably move up a little bit this is a, a, a proper 3d map and look where it is hello you see where you are yeah there's the engine room over there so this is just a, a big fat map in the room between the engine room and uh, the, the car room uh, it's pretty cool so Hetvesia new region what is it about? Hedvesia is kind of a Switzerland-like country. These Hedvesians are really keen on um, getting comfortable cars. They're not about speed at all, unlike the Ferenians. And they are pretty wealthy. Slow, but wealthy. And then we have Daluha. Basically the Dubai of uh, this uh, fake continent. And uh, they broke up from Ahana at some point, and some oligarch has created a trading, a free trade paradise over there. And they are completely into super and hyper cars, which are a market about the size of Gazmir, even though their overall market size is 
approximately a hundredth of uh, that of Gazmir. So an interesting little region. Also they have access to all the fuel. Probably they have oil in some capacity or not. Um, yes, so this, uh, these are the new regions and they are available already. Let's take a look. They are not quite working yet. Uh, well, one is, but the other one isn't. So let's just load up a car very quick. And you should be able to select them. Uh, also, we have made this a bit more, let's say, intuitive. Pinning is back. You will be able to pin demographics. Uh, the icons are still not uh, implemented. And this automatically, when you when you select a, a demographic here, that automatically compares it to the best car in that demographic. It will be uh, that it will compare you to an average of the top three in that demographic. So that you not only compare to a potential outlier, but rather to a good represent, uh, representative sample of that category. And the topmost one is your um, pinned demographic. There will only be one pin and then there's the top three. But that's not what I wanted to show you. Okay, uh, one sec. This is still broken. This is not supposed to be transparent. So ignore that for a moment. And here you have the new regions. Advesia is already working with all the... Ah, this is the flag, by the way. Um, Advesia is working. Daluha is... Working in calculation for oh oh it is actually working this time around okay uh, that's a bug I need to fix oh not me but uh, we need to fix um yes so both of these regions are actually working already that's good news so let's head back into the car project itself let's say we have designed all our models here now oh not all our models all our trims here now for the facelift and. Then you go into the factory manager and set up your factories, select your factories. Obviously, this is completely empty right now. Uh, factory manager will be added after we're done with engineering. But at that point, I hope we have branched off so that you don't get all those weird half functional uh, updates. So, yes, factory manager is where you select your fact factories and determine their um, tooling quality and the uh, not number of shifts you run, but um, all kinds of uh, like aut the automation sliders there the stuff you know from the light campaign basically from light campaign v2 in the key engine and then we have engineering this is something we have worked on a little bit already these are all placeholders mostly as you can see here it's like uh, tooling low normal sport and race <laughs> It's very racy tooling options and the reliability race. So if reliability is set to race, does this mean bad reliability? <laughs> now, of course, these sliders are just thrown in there to um, to be placeholders until these things, tooling, reliability, funding and pressure, time pressure is meant by that, are actually implemented. And this bar graph is uh, going to be polished up to be an indicator as you're you're not you are not making individual trim uh, engineering projects here but rather this is your facelift the entire facelift gets engineered here and that means that you will have a comparison between the engineering time and the factory tooling time as represented by bars so you want to match those so you see when you uh, up and down pressure then then your engineering um, time would change and you may want to uh, slow it down a little bit reduce the pressure so that at least the engineering takes as long as the tooling of your factory but anyway there are plenty of changes coming to um, how engineering works and the biggest one okay let me nerd out for a sec we have a really nice um, better way of looking at engineering in general and that is okay bear with me so previously every part had an engineering time and we can see that when we get into uh, any kind of sandboxy thing let's open an engine the way it previously worked is that all the item engineering times you've selected are just straight up linearly added to each other and whatever this number is, is the sum of all of them. This is going to change. And this is going to change because of uh, reasons of realism, I would say. Because 
your engineers are not like, okay, today we designed the crank and in five weeks time we designed the chassis. But rather you would have groups working on a package and these packages could be said to be these tabs. So you would have different engineers working in uh, in sequence on all those parts within a tab, but in parallel uh, when it comes to comparing two tabs. So if you have a very expensive, time-wise, top end selected, uh, like a dual overhead cam for valve in the 40s or something, and then that would take a long time. And if you at the same time engineer a, a shitty cast log exhaust, that should not make engineering time overall any longer. You see my drift there, right? So if you have something that takes four weeks to engineer, which a different team does, and something that takes two years to engineer, then the little time it takes to engineer the exhaust should not affect the overall engineering time much. It should affect it a tiny, tiny bit, even though it's short, because there are always some kind of inefficiencies and communication and so on. But our solution to this is, instead of adding things linearly as we have done so far and in the Light Campaign V2, we are going to build the, okay, now it gets really cool and nerdy for you, we are going to span a 15-dimensional space of engineering. Sounds cool, yes, it's very simple though. So. Basically, we are building a vector for each of these tabs where the uh, parts are linearly added. That's the vector length. And then we are spanning an orthogonal coordinate system of 15 dimensions. Like how many tabs there are. I think they are over 15. Could be less, could be more. And then we calculate the length of that 15 dimensional vector. Super easy. That's just Pythagoras uh, theorem. Um, and you so you square the length of one vector you add the square of the other vector and once you have added all the squares of the vector lengths then you just draw the square root out of it the effect of that is exactly what i described if you have one thing that takes a long time then that will influence the total length the most while the smaller components only add a little to it this will be making the uh, the choices you make a lot more interesting like uh, do I want to upgrade to multi-point fuel uh, fuel injection because that is one big fucking item you see that 16 months that would be one giant vector in there and that would make the entirety of the engineering project a lot longer maybe you were at a combined sum of 12 months before and then you add the 16 month vector to it or you replace one short vector with a longer one and that means that all of a sudden it takes well over two years. And uh, yeah, so that will make a big difference to how you, you view the engineering times in here and it will make it a lot more realistic. Also, it will give you a bit more of a, um, a bit more of an interesting choice here when it comes to quality because that increases engineering time. So let's say you have a shitty exhaust, a shitty exhaust that doesn't take any time to engineer. Well, you could add a little quality while you're waiting for the other parts, right? Doesn't make it much more expensive and just adds a little bit of time. So the overall project length might increase by, let's say, two or three weeks, which you don't really care about, but you would still have to pay the price for it. Um, and of course production time will still go up so overall I think this system will work a lot better and make things more interesting one thing that many of you have been pointed out uh, pointing out is the uh, load capacity stuff yeah load capacity was really weird and everything had basically zero load capacity un unless you made super off-roads <laughs> out of everything that of course is not very realistic one partial fix to that is what we did a few weeks ago which already is in here that uh, if you choose progressive springs or more advanced springs they have a higher extra load capacity rating per millimeter you lift them up so that would help and that already helps but overall the zero point was way 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 too high and we have fixed that we have lowered the zero point by what is it like five centimeters or something so 
and those had a uh, those calculations had a margin of 70 millimeters for whatever reason i don't know why i ever thought that would be a good idea um but yeah so that's fixed it's down to two centimeters margin and that should help get you some reasonable uh, load ratings even when your car is not an off-roader another thing that people have been mentioning is this weird uh towing capacity thing yeah towing capacity this is the not used that much um it is part of some categories uh, stats like demographics uh what's what's it called desires uh in some of these let's see utility has uh does it have that utility towing capacity yeah there it is uh towing capacity five percent uh and this towing capacity is what you see on the final testing tab and that would be in test track yes uh and here 200 kilos yes so this stat has been quite weird and also someone pointed out correctly that uh probably long geared cars should have real troubles with this and this was not affecting like when you when you amped up your gearing top speed like made the gear, first gear super long then this stat didn't even care and that's really bad so that's fixed too another thing that we have added is a new photo scene work in progress photo scene the huge factory and it is massive I think we established that it's like 1.4 kilometers long. It's quite a bit bigger than our small factory photo scene. And it's in an entirely different uh, different surroundings. So arid surroundings. So it should be giving you quite a few nice photo scene opportunities. Oh, what is going on here? Oh yes, you can see it load in slowly. Oh my god, this takes a long time. Alright, so, oh, chuggy chuggy. Yes, you can see this is massive. I think it's still loading in, and that's why it's so slow. But, um, oh, now, now it's better. Now it has loaded. As you can see, this is a lot different. A lot different, but there should be plenty of good photo opportunities in this stuff somewhere. Oh, oh my god. Oh, it's so much. Massive factory. Anyway, yeah, that's a work in progress photo scene. And that should be all for today. So you can expect uh, an update to hit on the open... Uh, beta branch of the game so for you who have opted in you will receive this update first but first off this I think it will take the rest of this week to polish it up to a state where we can release it to you uh, on the open beta branch and yeah I hope that fixes some of the crash bugs and I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time